few weeks ago, I set the circumnavigation record in Kerbal Space Program 2. This was a great time, and I wanted to come back to try a land speed record of sorts. Now, I'm gonna add a few rules to this challenge, though, that makes it a little different than what I've seen other people doing. First, I can't ever leave the ground, so if I lose contact, the attempt is totally lost. And second, while I can use stabilizers, I can't use wings or burn my engines slightly up to reduce my effective weight. This is going to make the physics extremely hard to counter, but I figured the best thing to do is just start out here in the vehicle assembly building by making a simple rocket car. Now for that, I was thinking the best power source was going to be to use a solid rocket fuel booster. Since these are so well integrated, it should be pretty stable, and once I got that on there, I also wanted to put down a seat. Now the reason I'm going for a seat here is that it's a lot lighter than using a command pod, and since I thought it was pretty important that I included a Kerbal in this test, it was pretty much the best way to go. Now to protect my Kerbal though, you see I used one of these cargo bay covers, and I ended up putting a nose cone on that. And with all that in place now, I just wanted to put on some wheels and give this a test. Now I picked these medium landing gear wheels here, and as soon as I put a set in the front and the back here, I wanted to test this out. Now for some reason it put me on the launch pad, which was quite interesting here, and of course that didn't really go so well, but trying this again, I ended up moving to the runway, and now I wanted to give it a full test. Now fortunately it seemed to be quite stable, and I saw no problems, at least until I launched it off, and then it started doing this. Now of course, that's not really what I had in mind, and I figured here some stabilizers might be able to solve that problem. These should keep it going straight, and ideally prevent it from just pitching up immediately. This, though, still didn't really seem to help all that much, and the landing gear seemed to just go off on its own. No, it was thinking that I might have just had some really bad weight distribution here, so I switched to a smaller booster, and you can see here I'm putting back down the landing gear. And after getting the stabilizers back on there, you'll notice I'm also adding on some of these separatrons. These are going to give me a little bit of an extra punch, and ideally should let me get up to a higher speed. Now, I was figuring that if I was able to get up to a super high speed really fast, that would be a lot better than slowly working my way down the runway, because the slower I accelerate, the more chance there is for me to just fly up and completely lose it. Of course, testing this though, it was very slow for some reason, and it seemed like those separatrons were adding a lot of lag. Now, by now I was getting quite suspicious of that landing gear, and I thought it might have been the cause of my problem, so you see here I'm switching over to these rover wheels. These are also a lot bigger, and I can also move them further out from the main fuel tank. That gives me a better stance against the ground, and ideally gives me better traction. Alrighty, things seem to be going a lot better, but I noticed I still see seem to have a similar kind of problem where I rolled off to the side and then eventually fell off the runway. At least now though, I was getting up to 300 meters per second, so I figured I wasn't doing too bad. I did kind of want to get up to about a thousand though, so you see here I deleted off some separatrons and stretched out my wheels even further. Now of course, by getting rid of the separatrons, I'll get rid of a lot of lag and I was hoping that was going to help out the wheels and also stancing them out further should give me more stability. Now this actually did seem to help here and you'll notice now it's getting up to around 340 meters per second. Now back in the vehicle assembly building here, I pulled off some of those separatrons. I thought that maybe if I instead used radial decouplers, I could add on larger boosters. Unfortunately though, it's still at the same stability problems, and I was gonna have to do something about that. Now I added on a couple of extra wheels to the outside here, and with these, I was doing much better. I was getting over 200 meters per second here, and I was still going completely straight. Now unfortunately though, right after that, I noticed I was bouncing up and down, and looking a bit closer here, it seemed like the front wheel was hitting into the ground, so I moved it up a bit further to ideally give better clearance. Now, I went ahead and re-ran this, though, and you'll notice this time I have a bit of a different angle. Now, I can kind of see a bit more clearly the wheel is literally just going into the ground, and that's the cause of my problems. Now, there's really nothing I could do about that, so I thought that maybe if I switched back over my old landing gear, I might be better off. Trying this out, though, it was interfering with the engine exhaust, and I wasn't getting any thrust. That was easy enough to push to the side, though, and testing this out once again, I was hoping to see some better results. Unfortunately, though, this landing gear is still super slidey, and I went right off the runway. It wasn't clipping into the ground, though, so I thought that maybe if I added on some stabilizers here, I would be able to stay straight while not going into the ground. Now, at first, this somewhat seemed to be
be helping. While I did go off the runway, I was able to launch off that first stage here and it seemed me pushing with the second one. This, though, still kind of seemed to limit me and it seemed like I wasn't able to get above 300 meters per second without me encountering too much drag. Now, once I saw that, I decided to clear off that design because I had a much better idea. Instead of using one small tank, I figured why not just use this large Clydesdale tank and slowly get up the speed. Now, it will have some problems, like I said before, but since the tank is so big, I can offset parts super far in it, and you can see just how far I can get these wheels off the center. But trying this out here, of course, it went to the launch pad first, because for some reason it always does that. But now on the runway, I wanted to see what would happen. Now, the wheels were bouncing up and down a lot for some reason, but turning down their damper strength here, I was getting some better results. Trying to launch off this rocket, while now it wasn't pointing down the runway, I figured I might as well give it a shot here, and it did seem to be a bit better. Eventually, it started to spin out here, but at the very least, it was sort of working, so I figured with some stabilizer fins, I might be good to go. You'll also notice I lowered it much closer to the runway to get less torque on the wheels. Now, inside this, running down the runway here, it honestly wasn't going too badly, and I was starting to push over 350 meters per second. That, though, was pretty much the end of it, and I figured that the drag from my wheels was probably causing most of my problems. Now, I thought that maybe more thrust would solve the problem, so the Cybertrons, I uh, ended up bringing them back in place here. Now, I have three separate rings of these, which the game really loved, and you can see the 16 times sped up footage here was really painful to go through. Now, eventually, they did run out here, and finally, I was able to play the game at a normal frame rate. This extra boost, though, ran out so quickly that I pretty much just ran out of speed by the time I got to the end of the runway anyway. Now, again, I was highly suspicious that the wheels were adding a lot of drag here, so I thought of a new solution. This time, I'm using a smaller fuel tank, and I'm using three reaction control wheels. These are heavy, but they shouldn't create a lot of drag, so if I use two small wheels and a sensor here, I should be able to keep myself upright. Now, trying this out on the runway here, it did seem to be working, and while I was able to kind of awkwardly slide around sometimes, it was also able to keep me up straight, and trying this out here, I actually wasn't doing too bad. Now, unfortunately, though, these wheels also were clipping right into the ground, and as soon as they did that, they just exploded and everything seemed to fall apart. This was getting quite frustrating here, and I figured that the only way to combat all this drag was really just using super powerful engines. Now, trying to use two of these mammoth engines here, I wanted to see what kind of power I could get, and it was pretty good. Now, I added on a few stabilizers in the back here, and after I did that, I also added on a couple of wing panels just to reduce my weight a little bit. This was to take some load off the wheels to see if this was even going to be possible, but you'll notice here they still couldn't take it, and around 400 meters per second, they kind of just fell apart. Now, I gave this a second run here, but again, at around 450 meters per second, they fell apart, and then my wing panel just started to do this. Now, this test did show me, though, that brute force really is the only way to go, so you'll see here I'm putting down a liquid fuel tank, and I'm putting down a vector engine. Now, I tried a new rover wheel type to try to fix up my wheels here, but even this still wasn't up for the challenge. You'll notice they started bouncing and kind of exploded at 400 meters per second. I even gave this another try here, and while I did kind of cheat by slowly burning off the ground to reduce my weight, they still are just freaking out over 400 meters per second, and the moment there's any weight on them, they just instantly exploded. So back in the vehicle assembly building, I finally did it here, and I deleted off the wheels. Now, I'm gonna need something to slide on, though, so you'll notice here I tried using these structural segments. Now, I was looking very carefully at their crash tolerance speed, and these seem to be very highly rated. The problem, though, is they were kind of tall, and instead I found this other piece, which had a similar speed and also could be super flat. That was ideal here, and now on the runway, I wanted to test this out. Now, I kind of liked how stable this was right off off the bat here, and it can take up to 500 meters per second, and it only exploded once I got off the runway. That was pretty huge, and while the wings didn't seem to appreciate that, that was a massive improvement. Now, I kind of figured here what I could do is add on a couple of these radial decouplers and put down a couple more fuel tanks. Now, to putting down some engines, you can see here I also put down those same structural pieces as before. This lets me slide across the ground nicely, but it also leads to this funny situation where I end up sliding slightly to the right, despite the fact I'm burning to the left. Now, I also guess I did 
didn't give myself enough clearance here because one of the engines did clip into the ground and then eventually explode. Now to fix that, I just lowered down these structural segments and after I did that, I gave this another test. This time, I still had that sliding issue from before and it was becoming very difficult to correct for. This time, I managed to slide completely off, which kind of ruined everything. Now I just added more stabilizers though because why not? And while I did help a little bit, I still just ran off to the side and I thought I was gonna need to do something else. I tried lowering back those structural pieces, which caused this situation to happen. And I guess the game didn't like this so much that it ended up just completely crashing on me and I had to do a full restart. Now this time, you see I'm able to deploy off those side stages and finally started accelerating with the center part. This was going super well and I was reaching speeds I had never reached before. I got up to 700 meters per second before eventually falling apart. I also had this wing pedal that was very slowly making its way into the ground and once it finally did here I could see that I did make it to nearly 700 meters per second. And I did notice that in a lot of these failures I ended up pitching up at the end and I thought that maybe that was the cause of the problem and not the panel just exploding. Now to solve that, I added a wing in place here, but instead of helping me get further off the ground, it's actually pushing me more into the ground. Adding a little extra weight here I thought might prevent me from nosing up, and of course after a few tests where things went very wrong, I did manage to launch off straight here and finally see if it was gonna work. This was somewhat coming together here, and I got up to 776 meters per second before running off the runway. Now I even resorted to cheating at this point to try to reduce my weight, and even this still wasn't getting me that much faster and realistically I knew I was gonna need to do something a little bit different. Now instead of the normal structural pieces I was using, I thought that it might get some better results here trying out these I-beams. These are a bit longer and of course they look more like rails and I thought they might work out. These though were falling apart at 600 meters per second but I thought that with some extra stability I might be able to improve that. Now separating them out a bit further, this time I managed to get up to a speed that was high enough that I didn't actually fall apart. That was a great start here and I thought it was some extra struts, maybe I'll get even more stability. And with that, I once again added on my back stages. I did decide to redesign everything here to make it a little bit more rigid, and you can see now I'm giving it a test. It did lead back a little bit, which was a little concerning, but I figured if I start up the engines at a low enough thrust, it is able to push me up a bit before I end up going. This was a pretty good strategy here, but unfortunately the plane still ended up just cartwheeling. Now I lowered down the stabilizers I was using on the main body, and after that I pushed my rails a little bit further back. This seemed to solve all my problems, and Finally here, I had something that wasn't half bad. Now, pulling off that first stage here, you can see the second stage going off, and just like before, it is able to keep accelerating, but now I'm up to 900 meters per second before I fail. This was the fastest I was ever able to accelerate something on the ground with how it exploding on me, and I thought with just a little bit more power, I might be able to get there. That's why I decided to add all the Separatrons again, and I thought that maybe this time they'd be good. Now, of course, they're still super laggy, but if they're on the bottom stage, it shouldn't be too big of a deal, and I just kept accelerating down the runway now. Now, they ran out a little bit sooner than my vector engines, which I wasn't a super big fan of, and they also seemed to add a little bit of instability, because I lost one of my rails. This, of course, caused my test to completely fail on me, and that really wasn't what I was was going for. I have a couple of solid rocket fuel boosters in the side here. I was hoping to just push it over 950 meters per second. This was actually not too bad at first here, and it seemed getting up to a reasonable speed, and I was able to deploy those off. This let me get to the end of the runway here, and I got up to 908 meters per second. I was super close to the end here, and I thought with just a couple extra boosters, I might be able to get there. These were mounted a little too high, though, and ended up just completely tipping me over. I knew for a fact that these vector engines were the best way to go for the bottom stage, and I removed off the Separatrons in the first stage. You also notice that my stabilizers were swept back really far on that back stage, and I found that this was adding the best amount of stability. Now, as far as I could tell, the least aerodynamic part of this was the rails themselves. I tried adding on a couple of nose cones onto the front of these to guide them through the air better, but of course, I had to keep them off the runway as much as possible. This got me to 935 meters per second, and I was so close to the 950 I needed to round up to 1,000. Now, at this point, I was making the most minute changes I possibly could, just rotating stabilizers to get them to stay as straight as possible, and you can see now, going for my last attempt. 
Starting out on the runway here, I was getting up to a pretty good speed, and now launching off the middle stage, I was slowly guiding into the middle. It was super important I was able to get into the middle to use this last stretch of runway, and with this, I could see that in my speedometer here, I got above 950 meters per second, which was exactly what I was looking for. That was an absolute marathon for me. It took forever to get everything tuned right, and I'm so happy that I managed to get it to work with out breaking any of my rules. Now, of course, if you guys want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any more challenge ideas in KSP2, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. And otherwise, till next time.